We've seen hints that the entropy may be related to uh, the number of microstates that are available to a system, and as the entropy increases, the number of microstates must also increase. Let's see if we can put that on a little bit firmer footing using some of the definitions that we've begun to develop. So first of all, we have established that a differential change in entropy is simply equal to an incremental change in reversible heat divided by temperature. We furthermore developed an expression for what it looks like on a molecular level for this incremental change in reversible heat. And we've written it as follows. Again, I'll pull out that 1 over T. It's equal to the sum over the states times the energy of those states times the differential of their probabilities. All right, so this gives us a way to uh, begin to uh, get a handle on how entropy arises at a molecular level. Now I'm going to pull the 1 over t inside and, and really write this as follows. I'm going to write it as E sub j over t times d p j. But I'm also going to do something else uh, with a little bit of foresight. I'm going to put a factor of the Boltzmann constant out here and one down here. Now the reason I'm doing this is that makes this thing here in the summation look an awful lot like the factor that I'm going to have if I were to write out the probability. So for example, in this system, the probability is going to be e to the minus ej over kbt. Okay, well that's just the thing that I've written here. And then this whole thing is going to be divided by the partition function. So if I were to take the logarithm of this probability. And notice I've got a thing that looks a lot like an a over b. So I'm taking a, a logarithm of something that looks like a over b. So that's just going to be using the properties of logs, log of a minus log of b. So if I take the logarithm of pj, it's going to be the logarithm of what's on top. But when I have an exponential, that's just going to be the argument of the exponential. So I'll have minus ej over kbt. For that term, and then I'm going to subtract the logarithm of what's in the bottom. So that's log of z. So now I can solve for this in this little equation and basically say that e over kbt is equal to minus the logarithm of the probability of the jth state minus the logarithm of the partition function. So I can just plug this in now directly in here and see what that gets me for this uh, incremental change in entropy. All right, so let's do that. So I have incremental change in entropy is equal to Kb times the sum over j. And now I'm going to substitute this expression in. Don't forget that minus sign. Substitute this expression in for this ratio. So I'll have negative log of pj minus log of the partition function times dpj. I got a bunch of minus signs here. Why don't I just pull them out front? So I'll have minus KB. And then I want to analyze what these things are. So I'm going to sep separate this into two sums. So I'll have one sum that has log of PJ times DPJ. That's just from that term. And then I'll have another sum that will be log of Z times DPJ. All right, but what does this second term look like? Well, this log of z doesn't depend on j, so I can bring it out front. So I'll end up having kb log of z times the sum over j of dpj. But what I've got here is really just the differential of the entire sum. So in other words, this is really equal to kb log of z times the differential of this. But this thing that I've written in here is the sum over all the states of the probabilities of those states. Well, the sum of all the probabilities is just equal to 1. So the differential of it has got to be equal to 0. So in other words, I can totally ignore this term. It's going to completely disappear. Well, that's great because now it makes this thing look a lot simpler. I've got KB, sum over J, and then I'll have log of PJ times D. PJ. Now what am I going to do with this? Well it turns out if I look very carefully at this, I'm going to claim, and then we'll 
demonstrate that it's true, I'm going to claim that this, in fact, can actually be written as equivalent to the probability times the log of the probability and the differential of that whole thing. So what would I get if I took this differential? Well, I'd get the differential of the first part times the second part. Oops. Well, that's just what I have here. But I also need to have the first part times the differential of the second part. Well, the differential of log of pj is going to give me 1 over pj. And then I'll have dpj. So this, this will cancel with that. I'll have just 1 dpj. But I already know that the sum over dpj is equal to 0, because I got it before. So in other words, the differential of this whole thing is equal to this thing alone. So voila, I have a fairly simple result from this. Now you'll notice that I've got ds is equal to this. Well, this thing is just d of this major operation. So if I've got ds is equal to d of this, that implies, if I integrate this equation, because these are both direct, uh, exact differentials, that I can, equate the equal, I can equate the entropy with minus kb times the sum over j of pj log pj. And uh, there will be an integration constant. So I'll just write it out here as 0, s0. So now it tells me that I have an expression here that tells me what the entropy might be for, um, for a system in terms of its state probabilities in that system. This was a formulation originally due to Gibbs in the 19th century. Um, and so we'll call it the Gibbs formulation of statistical entropy. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that all of these values, pj, they're all less than 1. Well, I guess less than or equal to 1. So the logarithms of those values are all going to be less than or equal to 0. They're only equal to 0 when pj is equal to 1. And if pj equals 1, it means it's the only one that is equal to 1, because all the rest of them are going to be 0. So what that tells us is that these terms are fractions. These terms are negative. So all of the terms in the sum are negative, so the minus sign out here is going to be negated by the sign of what's in the summation. So that tells us that s, in effect, is always going to be a positive quantity. It's always going to be greater than or equal to 0. And, and since I have an integration constant here, I suppose I should say more exactly that s is always going to be greater than whatever this integration constant is. But we're going to need the third law to, to determine that for us. All right, so this was Gibbs formulation of the entropy. I want to note that it is uh, good for any system. It doesn't have any constraints on it. Um, so uh, this, in fact, is a much the most general form, I guess, we can write in terms of statistical entropy and is generally applicable to any system.